In this video, we're going to see how we can apply crystal field theory to reason about the colors of transition metal complexes. The crystal field splitting energy is deeply related to the colors of transition metal complexes, but we need to dig a little bit more into the nature of color and light to really understand and be able to predict the colors of transition metal complexes given information about the energies of light and the wavelengths that they absorb. Let's start with some general background about the interaction of light with matter, regardless of whether that matter is a coordination complex or not. For any molecule, that molecule is going to absorb light with an energy equal to the difference between the ground state and an excited state. And the excited state is typically generated by imagining the ground state electron configuration and taking one of those electrons and promoting it to a higher energy empty orbital. This produces an excited state. In transition metal coordination complexes, the crystal field splitting often corresponds to the visible range of the electromagnetic spectrum, meaning it takes about the energy of a visible light photon to promote an electron, for example, from the lower energy T2G level to the higher energy EG level of the octahedral d orbital splitting. And so this is why transition metal complexes often appear colored since they absorb light as electrons transmit transition from lower to higher energy d orbitals and that light is often in the visible range of the spectrum. We can relate the energy of the photon absorbed and the energy gap, the crystal field splitting gap delta, to a wavelength via the relation between photon energy and wavelength. E equals Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by lambda. So we can relate the crystal field splitting delta here on the left hand side of this equation with a wavelength of light absorbed. But the wavelength of light absorbed doesn't correspond to the color that the compound appears. And this is where things get a little tricky. Absorption of light means that the substance is taking that wavelength out of any incident light. So that's not what we see, right? We don't see that wavelength of light absorbed. What we see is all of the wavelengths of light that are transmitted by the substance. And this tends to lead to an appearance that is the complementary color of the color of light absorbed. So for example, if the substance absorbs at 595 nanometers, which is in the orange region of the visible spectrum, the color it will appear will actually be blue, the complementary color, since blue light will be transmitted sort of most strongly, and the orange light will be taken out of any incident white light, so we won't see it, right? The color we will see is blue, not orange. And you can make use of a color wheel like this in general to infer the color that a substance appears based on its wavelength of absorption. For example, if a substance absorbs at 620 nanometers, well, it's going to take red-orange light out and the color we will see will actually be bluish green. The color we'll see will be something along the lines of 490 nanometers. Here's a practice problem that allows us to put these ideas into practice. Plastocyanin is a copper containing protein. It's a protein that actually contains a coordination complex within its structure and it absorbs light at a wavelength of 595 nanometers. And the question is, what color does a solution of this protein appear? Well, we've already seen that 595 nanometers is in the orange region of the spectrum. And if we back up to the color wheel, the color we would actually observe corresponds to the most strongly transmitted color, which is going to be the complementary color, which is blue. And so this uh, solution of this protein would appear blue due to the absorption of orange by the copper containing complex inside the plas plastocyanin protein. The last thing I want to say about this is just to remind us to keep in mind that the field strength of the ligand can have an influence on the color of transition metal complexes. Ligand field strength relates to the size of the crystal field splitting, right? And that crystal field splitting energy is related to the wavelength of light absorbed. So for example, as we increase the field strength of the ligand, going from something like iodide to water to carbon monoxide, we are decreasing or shortening the wavelength of light absorbed since the crystal field splitting gap is going up. So we're moving around the color wheel kind of in this direction, right? And this causes the appearance, the color 
of the complex to change, right? Because we're moving the complementary color around the color wheel as well. So keep in mind that ligands have a big influence on the colors of transition metal complexes via effects on the crystal field splitting energy.